Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, don't stand so near the fire. you get scorched. I know what I'm doing. You stand back and watch out of this, where the spark's flying. Aren't you just sizzling? Not at all. The leaves are good and dry. You better keep the hose handy. Mm, it is. It is if I belong to hook and ladder squad number two. Mmm, what a wonderful smell. Look at all that smoke climb like the Indian rope act. Yeah, hand me the rake. David, are you sure you should be doing all this? <laughs> Never felt better in my life. Does a man good to get out of the house and do a little work around his place? Does a man good only if he feels well enough to be done good to by doing work around the place. How's your collarbone? Mended, thank you. How's yours? Fine. Besides, I'm not using my right arm, if you've noticed. Well, now, just don't overdo it, darling. Don't worry. I'm not doing any of the work. The fire is. Mm, it's coming in my eyes now. The wind's changing. we better move over to the other side. We're going to have millions more leaves to burn, aren't we? Mm, we'll have them, but not to burn. They're too valuable for that. For what? Well, they come in handy for mulching. That means enriching the soil. Oh, mulching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we certainly were smart to buy a farm. You have a smudge on your nose, Mrs. Farmer. I have? Mm -hmm. Stand still while I wipe it off. Mm. Can you find another smudge on me someplace? One kiss, that's all. Now, skadoodle. Oh, why wasn't I a farmer's wife long before this? <laughs> I married you out of the cradle as it is. You know, being a farmer's wife is a lot more fun than being an architect's wife. I hate to think of you going back to the office. All the way to New York. You want to eat all winter? Not specially. You want a roof over your head? Not specially. You want to send our son to college? Oh, well, he'll be bright enough to get scholarships. Do you want to keep this farm so that we can keep burning leaves in the fall year after year and raise cows and pigs? And chickens. Don't well, forget the chickens. do you? Yes, I do very much. David? Hmm? You going to start being an architect again soon? Oh, any day now. Did Dr. Barry say it was all right? Dr. Barry will. And you're not to talk to him first, mind you. Me? Yes, you... I wouldn't dream of talking to him behind your back. What kind of a girl do you think I am? A scheming little wench. <laughs> that must be Roger. He said he might drive up to say hello. Yeah, that, that's Roger's car, all right. Oh, isn't it beautiful? The only trouble is it's so swank. I'd be embarrassed to drive around in it. Roger! Roger, hello, you're early. Hello! 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 Come on up, lend a hand. All right. Oh, you're burning leaves, you lucky people. Don't you know that's my favorite pastime? We extend you an invitation to join us. And I accept. I accept with great pleasure. How do you think David looks? Well, from over here, he looks fine. From over here, I looks even better. <laughs> that's good news. Oh, Roger, you're so dressed up. <laughs> Just my everyday city clothes. I came straight from the office. Well, stand back, man, or you'll get your suit ruined by one of these sparks. I would sacrifice a suit to a spark any day, my boy. Oh. Mmm, what a perfume. There's nothing in the world that smells one half as good as fall leaves smoldering in the brush. Look at him, David, smacking his lips. You'd think he was eating them. If they tasted half as good as they smell, I would eat them. <laughs> Any word from Carrington? What's new on the freight terminal, Roger? Well, I told him he could have the revisions in the pans in a little while, just as soon as you're well enough to draw them up. He's being patient. Yes, but how long is he going to be patient? Just as long as he has to be. That's not much longer. I'm about ready to get back into harness. Indeed? Yeah, there must be a lot of work piled up down at the office. It kept us going, but I'm neither as old or decrepit as your attitude implies. My dear Roger... You could be 125 years old, palsied in both arms and scurrying around in a wheelchair, and you'd still be able to design circles around any other architect I know. It's nice of you to say that. He means it, too. David often tells me he'd rather work with you than with the richest and biggest firm in the country. It's good to know. Mm. But seriously, when are you planning to get back to work? 
Seriously? If you need me, this minute. If you can wait, tomorrow. <laughs> Never felt better in my life. Just a few things I mustn't do, like driving a car and arduous gymnastics. But, well, I can get along without them just fine. So, David, I'm... David, darling, um, I'm just dying of thirst. If you're feeling so healthy, why don't you go down to the house and get me a glass of water? Drink out of the hose. It's the same water. Right out of the nozzle of the hose? Well, why not? I'll drown. Now, you're not that clumsy. How do you know? Well, what do I have to do to get you to do one little simple thing for me, like getting me a little glass of water? This isn't like you, but all right, darling. Now, you watch the fire. Mm. There's still a slight wind, and there's quite a bit of dry brush around here. We'll be careful. I'm here now, so not a thing to worry about. I'm a past master at burning fall leaves. <laughs> oh, what a perfume. Mm. And the sound of that fire crackling it. Keep your symphonies, Claudia. I'll take this. What a perfect afternoon. Dusk, almost. Never mind. Moments like these mustn't last too long. Roger, I hate talking behind David's back, but there's a big favor you can do for me. There is. <laughs> then speak up, Claudia. Well, you can see that David's just champing at the bit, can't you? To go back to work? It's foolish. Yes, it is, but for a combination of reasons. I, I know him so well, he feels that he's left you in the lurch long enough. Ridiculous. Well, he feels that way, and you know how conscientious David is. To a fault. He hates the idea of being a loafer, of not fulfilling his duties and taking his share of responsibilities. His automobile accident was so sudden that he had to stop a lot of things in the middle, and they're bothering him. He, he can't wait to get them finished. Anything that he's left in the middle that has to do with the office can w wait until he's darn good and ready. I know, I know, but I can't tell him that, Roger. He'll think I'm trying to keep him home or that I'm nervous about him or something like that. It, it makes him impatient and it makes me nag and it's not good. So you want me to tell him not to hurry back? Think you could convince him? I don't promise you anything. That husband of yours is no easy man to handle, even with kid gloves. Especially with kid gloves. I guess maybe I, I wouldn't have married him if he had been easy to handle. He's an awful lot of man. I love him for it. Good girl. You know, there are a lot of women who want to marry putty, clay in their hands. Not I. I only wanted to marry David. How are the leaves coming? Burning. I have your glass, madame. Oh, aren't you sweet to me? So thoughtful, too. There's a kiss. Go away. We're in public. <laughs> now, untwist the hose and you can fill your glass. Here. Yeah. There you are. It's lukewarm. Well, it hasn't been on ice. How remiss of you. I can't drink lukewarm water. Aren't we fussy? We are. Any objections? And I'm not going back to the kitchen to get you a glass of iced water. Nobody asked you to. I will go myself. Why don't you think of that in the first place? Then I wouldn't have had to carry this heavy glass back for you. One little favor I ask of you. All I get is complaints, complaints. You stay here and talk to Roger. I'll show you who's an independent 20th century woman. <laughs> and she is, you know. <laughs> yeah, don't I know? Oh, I dare say that Claudia could get along under any circumstances. Yeah, a lot better than we could, probably. Probably. Oh, listen to those leaves. Now, David, uh, when are you contemplating to start coming into town? I told you. Today's Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, Thursday... So soon, really. Why not? I have no more excuses, Roger. Unfortunately, I'm all in one piece again. Uh, did the doctor really say that you could? He will. I'll check with him tonight. I, I don't see what's your big hurry. Well, I have a wife and child. As you know. long as the firm functions, with or without you, your wife and child will be taken care of. Believe me. I believe you. Good. That's why I feel I've got to get going. I'm not a man who accepts gifts easily. Great mistake. But in this case, it doesn't matter because it's not a gift that's offered. It's your right and your due. I think you're a fool to rush back. You know, once back, you're back. And there will be no getting away from it. Uh, I, I know. There aren't going to be many falls like this one. Falls when you can stay home and burn leaves. Tend to your land. 
and supervise the rebuilding of your barn yourself. Each fall is a very separate occasion, very special. And there will be plenty of Octobers to spend in the office wishing you were out here. And no excuses. I know that, too. Now you have the chance and excuses. Roger, you're giving with one hand and taking with the other. You tell me to stay out here in the country and rake my leaves in one breath, and then with the next you tell me that Carrington is getting impatient for the terminal. Carrington will wait. Or if you feel like working, why don't you work out here? You have a drawing board, instruments, all the equipment you need. Don't waste time commuting back and forth on the train. Get to work. And those hours you'd spend traveling, you can spend working on the farm or or taking it easy. After all, a runner doesn't start sprinting with a mile. He, he starts with small distances. Hmm. Get thee behind me, Satan, and push. <laughs> Seriously, Bill. There are a lot of things to be done up here, things I want to do. Jared Tucker gave us a pig, you know. We have, to, we have her put up in the barn now temporarily, but she wants to have a place of her own. And Fritz has been itching to get a cow. Of course, the barn has to be finished, and there's some work that has to be done on the grounds before winter sets in, and it's fall. I first fall on the farm. Strange when you own a piece of ground how each season becomes an occasion. Then let it be an occasion. All right. All right, you've convinced me. I'll stay up here. By gosh, I, I, I won't come back to New York. How's that? You mean you've made up your mind? Mm-hmm. My mind is made up. But, David, it was so simple. Well, that's not fair. What isn't fair? Well, I thought I was going to have a good fight on my hands. Uh, uh, Come on with the fire. Just wait till I tell Claudia about the man she married. Who's the best-natured party giver in your family? Probably the teenager, if there is one. For young folks have discovered the happy secret of easy entertaining. As long as there's plenty of coke in the house, they don't worry. Many an adult hostess could profit from that example. Serve your guest ice-cold Coca-Cola and visit refreshed. Well, Mr. King, uh, mind if I interrupt you to say hello? Oh, quite on the contrary. It's good to see you again, Mr. Killian. Thank you. Country's beautiful, isn't it? I should say it is. I did a pretty good job with David, didn't I? Yes, you certainly did. Though, uh, with due respect for your talents, you didn't have to do much doing, you know. No, I didn't. And it wouldn't take much coaxing to coax me, either. To stay out here in the country? Just for the night. Because I have to get back into town in the morning. Well, consider yourself coaxed. Because, as a matter of fact, the table is set for you and your bed is made. I know Claudia expected you to stay. That's good. I'll stay the night. But in the morning, I shall be on my way. We'll see about that tomorrow. But have a nice stay, Mr. Killian. Oh, I will. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, When you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.